Now, blues guitar can be one of those things that doesn't really become a spectator sport because some people say, oh, it all sounds the same. And to a certain extent, I would concur if you have something like this. And then the next tune went. And it had that same sort of riff, maybe in a different key. It would be OK if there's a really good front person. If you've got somebody singing classic blues tunes, that's the better. But sometimes at the sort of blues jam sessions, you don't have anybody singing and it's just the same sort of thing again. Generally speaking, the 12-bar blues has three chords in it, three chord trick. You have chord one for four bars, then it goes to chord four for two bars, back to chord one for two bars, chord five for a bar, chord four for a bar, back to chord one for two bars. With maybe a little turnaround or... Now, the reason the blues is like that is because you have a lyric on the first four bars. My baby, she left me this morning. My baby took the 519. My baby left me this morning. Oh, on the 519. And then for the chord five, there'll be the finish of that particular part of the story. Then she came back again. Oh, my baby back home. So if you've got somebody at the front who is really on it with the sort of telling of the story, a singer that can narrate, that can actually, there's this whole sense of line and, and delivery, then that's great. And the band basically are the backing band. Now, in the case of things like guitar solos, if you've just got a, a tune that just has solo on it, like an instrumental, you're going to run into sort of a little bit of trouble because it's very quick with the sort of blues to sort of run out of ideas to sort of, you know, to, to develop your solo. Now, we've got here the minor pentatonic on G. So I'm at third fret here because I've got some backing tracks that I'm going to play to in a minute. Now, I've done other blues guitar videos and you can see those on my channel. So please do subscribe and you can see any uh, other content and future stuff as well. Now, you can also with the guitar do bends and vibrato and hammer-ons, slides and vibrato that you can't get out of a keyboard, for example. And there's all sorts of rhythmic inflections and, of course, phrasing being all important. Now, I've got a bl slow blues backing track in G minor, which I'm going to play over. I'm just going to play a verse of it using only these notes. sequence again. So all I used was the minor pentatonic on G. And I actually extended the scale up to the next octave and you, you can keep going up the fretboard like that. Now in order to develop that solo I just started with some fairly sort of quieter lower pitch stuff and then developed onto that so that you don't blow all your riffs in the first 10 seconds you just just really take it easy and the phrasing and the gaps that you have between those between those lines makes a huge difference to how that solo is constructed now i've got another 
backing track here because what I've done is to put a little bit of a slant on the, put a different perspective on the blues here. Instead of... adding all these extra notes. I've actually turned the thing on its head and changed the backing track. Now, these, this key of G minor, I've got G minor, C minor, and D minor. Those were the chords in my previous backing track. But this one, I've got G minor, A minor, B flat, C minor, D minor and D7, and E flat. So the chord palette has just grown. That means that you've got something a bit more exploratory to play over and it makes a basic blues solo like this sound actually sound quite a lot better because the uh, what's happening underneath is moving about but it's still compatible with this. So if I play from the beginning So that time there were many more chords underneath that solo, which kind of helped it help carry those simple ideas along a bit because essentially what happens if the chord changes, the ideas that you're playing are a, a, a different distance from the root note of that chord, which makes all the difference. So we had G minor, and then E flat nine or E flat seven, if you wanted. And then we had G minor and to B flat. Now B flat and G minor, for example. G minor and B flat are a relative pair. G minor shares many characteristics with B flat major. Indeed, they share the same key signature. There's two flats in G minor, and two flats in B flat major. And then after the B flat major, I had an A minor seven chord. Now, the blues, that pentatonic scale isn't overly compatible with that A minor 7. The G is, and the C is, but the F and the B flat, not so much. But it provides a little bit of dissonance, a little bit of interest, a bit of tension inside that blues solo, so that it's not just safe. There are a few notes that sort of grate a little bit. Actually, we would we want that. Anyway, after D, after A minor seven, I had a D seven, like that, which again works pretty well with that pentatonic minor scale. Uh, and then the second section, it sort of repeated itself again. Then it went to C minor. Now C minor is like chord four in the original. Then to D seven, which is chord five. Then E flat major seven, which is completely compatible with G minor. In fact, E flat major seven could be a G minor chord with an E flat in the bass. So it's quite a nice chord. It, it works really well. It's quite sort of jazzy. It's quite exploratory. It's quite a nice thing to have in your blues. So for example, in BB King's The Thrill Is Gone, you'd have chord one, chord four, and then chord flat and sixth. Or 
Well, strictly speaking, in music theory parlance, E flat is actually chord six. One, two, three, four, five, six, because it's all built on that natural minor scale. And then D minor seven, C minor seven, D seven. So you can create something that really works just using your minor pentatonic, but if you play around with the chords underneath, lots of people would think, well, how can I make that solo more interesting over those basic chords? But actually flip it on its head and you end up with something that can sound, you know, if you listen to um, the sort of early 70s Freddie King albums, there's a lot of that going on in there with these that have got these session musicians to play all these sort of chord changes and Freddie King's there with his fantastic voice and guitar playing but playing quite simple blues lines but it just it's so good it works so well and that's a, a good example of this is turning that sort of backing track into something that's more exploratory anyway I'll leave you with a little bit more over your chords